Hello everyone, this is Shannon from Not So Poe, and today I'm doing a review of Highly Spicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hibbert. Hibbert is one of my favorite romance authors. She always writes amazing books with a lot of humor and great writing, but this is her first YA romance, so I was curious how it would turn out, and I ended up loving it, so I want to tell you all about why I loved it so much. So first, let me tell you what the story is about. This story follows two teenagers, Brad and Celine, who were best friends when they were kids, but for the past few years since middle school, they've actually sort of become enemies because they had a big falling out when Brad wanted to expand his friend group and he was able to be one of the popular kids, while Celine, who's a big conspiracy theorist and somebody who's very happy with all of her strangeness, just didn't fit in. And so they grew apart in a way that they really resented each other. But now they are about to be applying for college and there is a scholarship program that involves doing sort of a wilderness survival thing that both of them want to be a part of, but they're going to have to work together for that. So now let me talk about all of the reasons why I thought this book was just such a fun read. First of all, starting with how funny it is, I think that Hibbert has amazing writing. She is so funny and you feel it in this book. There's so much banter. There's so many funny situations and interactions. Um, there's a lot of like dynamics between uh, the characters and their friends and their family. Um, and between each other, that banter back and forth is just super cute and really, really witty. I think that the first couple of chapters, it's maybe slightly over the top in that antagonistic banter when they're still in that enemies phase. Um, and there's like a lot of pop culture references and things. But as you get into it, I was just so, so into how funny this book was. And it just left me with a smile on my face all the time. Another thing I loved about this book is the mental health representation. So Brad, the hero of the story, has OCD. And this is a huge thing that he has to deal with. It's very much just a part of his life. He's had it for a long time. He's been through therapy. So when he has intrusive thoughts or he finds himself counting things to try to feel in control, he knows the methods that his therapist has worked with him on, on how to manage it and how to control it. And I just love the way that this is just threaded through the whole story. It's just part of what he deals with, part of his life. And Celine is always, even in the beginning when she's more antagonistic towards him, always really supportive and understanding of like what he's going through. And Celine herself has kind of some mental health issues that she's dealing with, um, some issues in her family that she's still recovering from. And we see her kind of struggling with that and her journey towards mental health. Another thing I loved about this story was the non-toxic masculinity. Brad, the hero, is in a sense very masculine. He's very tall and very fit, very athletic, plays a lot of sports. He's really handsome and charming and popular, but he's also somebody who has a lot of insecurities that he's very open about. He's very vulnerable and very honest about his emotions. He deals with his OCD and that's like a very big part of him. He is somebody who really is okay with his soft side and doesn't feel the need to kind of um, project manliness or anything like that. And we also see good modeling from his dad who is somebody who's often at home baking goodies for Brad and his friends and just is a really supportive ear and these sorts of things. So I loved that non-toxic masculinity. I also love the way that social issues are threaded through this book, but very much in the background. None of it is the primary purpose of any of the story, but it's just a part of the lives that Celine and Brad live. So both of them are black teenagers and that's kind of a part of their experience. And it's mentioned at times just how they feel like being some of the only black kids at their school and what that means when, when they go to college, where they go to college and how they're going to feel in that community. There's also, um, a lot of talks about them being from the Midlands, which is, you know, it's not London, and where are they gonna get opportunities? This scholarship that they're applying for is one of the few things that they really feel like they've got options for in terms of staying where they are in the Midlands and what kind of career options they have. So there's a lot of discussions of that, of class, and also just the pressures that they feel to succeed. Um, Celine, especially, her mom is a single mom, and so her mom has worked really, really hard to provide for Celine and her sisters, and Celine feels that internal pressure to kind of live up to all of her potential and, and kind of be worthy of all that effort that her mom put in. 
And speaking of parents, I loved the family dynamics in this story. Um, we see quite a bit of the dynamics that Brad and Celine have with their parents, and their parents are good people and they're there for them. They don't always say the right thing or do exactly the right thing, but when they mess up, they acknowledge it and they apologize and they work to fix it. And then we also have some great siblings. Celine has an older sister who's there to kind of talk to her and also sometimes call her out on her stuff. Um, um, and Brad has a younger brother who is so obnoxious, but also really funny and also there for Brad. So I just loved those family dynamics and, and how wonderful their families were and how there for them they were. Another thing that really worked for me in this story is how it is just as much a coming of age story as it is a romance. Um, because this is the sort of YA romance, we've got characters who are just starting to enter adulthood and they're faced with so many choices and also just so many changes internally as well as externally that they've got to learn how to adapt to and figure out who they want to be. And I think that that goes so well in this story um, because they're figuring out you know, who they wanna be and they're questioning a lot of the choices that they had made um, up to this point, such as their falling out of their friendship, such as just what they want to be in life. And those questions drive the story in such a really meaningful way that it feels so fulfilling on that kind of individual character level as well as on the romantic level. Overall, I think Hibbert did such an amazing job with Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute. It is just such a fun romance. I think that this story has all of her trademark humor. It's got a lot of really interesting kind of um, personal development storylines as well as such an adorable romance. I loved the characters. The hero is so sweet. It is just a really fun ride. So if you like romance and if you've read Hibbert before, you're gonna love this. It's such a great read. I hope that you pick it up. If you guys have read this or if you have read other Hibbert books and you want to gush about how much you love her work or if you want to just talk about any other YA romances that you've loved that have really sweet storylines, I'd love to hear from you. Just leave me a comment down below.